Good morning and welcome to the recognition event this morning for Armadillo Aerospace. My name is Doug Comstock and I'm the director of NASA's Innovative Partnerships Program, which includes Centennial Challenges, NASA's program uh, of prizes for the citizen inventor. Uh, I'd like to introduce Andy Petro. Andy, if you could uh, please stand up. Andy's the program manager for C Centennial Challenges, and uh, he manages that as well as some other exciting projects in the innovation incubator element of the Innovative Partnerships Program, and he's been doing a great job. Thanks, Andy. And we're delighted that you've all been able to join us this morning to recognize the achievements of Armadillo Aerospace in winning level one of the Lunar Lander Challenge, one of seven competitions that we currently have. The $350,000 that Armadillo Aerospace has won is the largest prize yet awarded under the Centennial Challenges program. However, there is still $1.65 million uh, remaining uh, in prize money for the Lunar Lander Challenge, so wh while we're here to celebrate uh, an important milestone, the competition is far from over. We've got a great program this morning, and you'll hear from several uh, people who have been instrumental in carrying out the Lunar Lander Challenge, uh, and of course from the Level 1 winner. Uh, but first, let me give you a quick overview of the program. NASA has been pursuing Centennial Challenges, uh, began in 2003, and that was the year of the Centennial of Flight, hence the name Centennial Challenges. And uh, the prize competitions are intended to spur innovation from sources that NASA wouldn't normally do business with or have access to or even uh, be aware of, really the citizen inventor, to develop technologies that NASA needs to help advance the frontiers of space and aeronautics. A specific authorization was needed to conduct these types of prizes, and Congress provided authorization in the NASA Authorization Act of 2005. And with the funding that was provided by Congress, NASA established seven prize competitions under agreements with what we call allied organizations, who have each entered into space site agreements with NASA to manage the seven Centennial Challenge prize competitions uh, at no cost to NASA. The allied organizations can raise funds to offset the costs of running the competitions, such as XPRIZE has done with Northrop Grumman and the state of New Mexico, and NASA provides the prize money. I'd like to provide a brief summary of the seven competitions that we currently have funded, along with the allied organizations that are doing such a great job of managing the competitions for NASA. First is the Lunar Lander Challenge, the reason we're all here today, uh, which involves building and flying a rocket-powered vehicle that simulates the flight of a vehicle to the moon. It's managed, of course, by the XPRIZE Foundation with financial support from Northrop Grumman Corporation and the state of New Mexico, who we'll hear from later today. The General Aviation Technology Challenge advances important technologies that improve fuel efficiency and reduce noise and is managed by the Comparative Aircraft Flight Efficiency Foundation, known as CAFE. The power beaming and tether competitions demonstrate wireless power transmission and advanced super strength lightweight materials, and they're both managed by the Spaceward Foundation. The Astronaut Glove Challenge is advancing innovative spacesuit glove designs and awarded the first prize money in the Centennial Challenges program when Peter Homer won $200,000 in 2007. And the Astronaut Glove Competition is managed by Volans Aerospace. The Regolith Excavation and Moon Rocks Challenges advance technologies needed to first move and then extract oxygen from simulated lunar regolith. And these competitions are both managed by the California Space Education and Workforce Institute. All of these competitions are making contributions towards advancing technologies that are very important to NASA, uh, but there is even more opportunity, and we hope to pursue more challenges uh, in the future. Uh, we're here today to celebrate the achievements of Armadillo Aerospace and the other competitors uh, in the Lunar Lander Challenge. And we've got a number of distinguished guests here today, many of whom have played crucial roles in enabling and supporting NASA's uh, prize programs, and you'll hear from several of them later in the program. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize uh, several of our friends who are joining us from uh, Capitol Hill this morning. And uh, I believe uh, Jan Janet uh, Poppleton is here, representing uh, uh, Representative Ralph Hall, who unfortunately was not able to, to join us this morning. We've also got uh, Leslie Gilbert and Ken Monroe from the uh, House Science and Technology Committee. Um, they're back there. Uh, I, I know Jeff Bingham was planning on joining us. Is, is Jeff, Jeff here? Um, and also Dina Contreras representing uh, Congressman Ken Calvert, who's been a great supporter of the program. Uh, now, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, NASA Administrator Mike Griffin, who's been a terrific supporter of uh, the Centennial Challenges program, and uh, he'd like to share a few remarks with us this morning. Mike. 